Today our reading is Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 46. It's a solemn reading for a solemn day, as today we celebrate, or rather, we commemorate Holocaust Memorial Day. This year you can watch the ceremony online if you register beforehand. It starts at 7 o'clock this evening. And if you go to the website for Holocaust Memorial Day 2021, you can register there and get a link. At the end of the, of the uh, event, at 8 o'clock, everybody is encouraged to safely place a lighted candle into their window as a memorial to all those who were killed just because of who they were, and also as a symbol of rejecting all hatred and prejudice today. So let's all do that, put a lighted candle in our window at 8 o'clock this evening. This day is observed each year, rather like Remembrance Sunday, as uh, a memorial lest we forget. To try to ensure that humanity learns a lesson from some of our worst mistakes. So, have we learnt that lesson? Well, a glance at the Holocaust Memorial Day website suggests that no, we haven't. At least four other incidences of genocide are recognised by the international community that have happened since in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. It does seem that six million Jews and all the other people that the Nazi persecution killed were not enough to teach us this lesson. In Cambodia in 1975-79 to 79, under Khmer Rouge with their leader Pol Pot, civilian deaths from execution Disease, exhaustion and starvation are estimated at over 2 million people. In Rwanda, in just 100 days in 1994, about a million Tutsis were, were murdered. Tutsi men, women, children and babies were killed, even in schools and churches. Often, the killers were people they knew, neighbours, workmates, former friends, and machetes and clubs were usually the weapons of murder. In Bosnia, the violence and killings culminated in the massacre that began on the 13th of July in 95 and lasted 72 hours, when over 8,000 Bosniak men and boys were murdered in and around Srebrenica. Many were shot trying to escape. Their bodies were bulldozed into mass graves and concealed. The genocide at Srebrenica is the largest incidence of mass murder in Europe since World War II. In Darfur, in Sudan, civil war has led to the deaths of between 200,000 and 400,000 people, although estimates vary, and it could be many more. Over two and a half million are displaced in Darfur. They now use the term identity-based persecution to indicate the wide range of pretexts for killing others who have a different kind of identity to us, whoever we may be. We might think of the Yazidis in Iraq, the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, the Uyghur Muslims in China. Hundreds of thousands, even a million, in each case killed and many more displaced. Who you are is a matter of life and death in today's world. How can this appalling evil continue? Why do we let it happen? Do we even notice? Are we really aware? It's tempting sometimes to think dreadful things happen in faraway places. But tomorrow it could be here, it could be us. And however far away, every single one of those people is just exactly like you and me. Are we asleep like the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane? Unaware, oblivious, too exhausted perhaps with our own local problems? These terrible atrocities are an indictment of the human race. They shame us. We should feel ashamed. Identity-based persecution. How can we hate and discriminate against 
and harm people just because of who they are. A species so divided against itself must be a sick species, a sinful species. Twas ever thus, since Cain killed his brother Abel. Jesus said, the Son of Man is, is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And they came and they took him and they killed him. But they couldn't destroy him because he responded not with hatred, but with love. And love conquers death. The day we learn to love, not hate, will be the day when we have learnt our lesson. <laughs>